Hey you, welcome to the first in a line of speed paints we're doing where the players of the characters are drawing those characters and then having a chat with me, the dungeon master, about that character. It's <laughs> 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 probably a more succinct way to say that. But um, hi, I'm Jenny, I'm the dungeon master for High Hopes Their Rolls. Uh, and with me today is Matthew Kemp, MK, Matt. <laughs> Hello, hi, I'm here. I play Rook. <laughs> Who's in this drawing? He is, right here, <laughs> right now. Um, He's also just uh, essentially had a whole episode about him released, right? Oh just, god, yeah, that would have happened. Like last week, maybe, we released chapter two of uh, High Hopes of Rolls. Um, oh god, I uh, didn't like it. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, <laughs> yeah, that's a big thing, I hope you liked it. <laughs> So you've drawn, you've drawn Rook. Do you want to tell us? Uh, you've also drawn, like, him in the Meriloth, right? I have, yes, or at least some quiet part of a Meriloth, yeah, near the coastline. Um, I'm not really sure where, but um, I don't know. It was a lot more like a rustic feeling in the buildings below. Hmm. Yeah, I didn't really. This is this whole piece is just me having fun. <laughs> yeah. Also, we uh, we we kind of have like the tears, uh, the tears of the city, because Emeraldoff is it is a tiered city that it's um, kind of class based, right? Like the stuff that's lower to the floor is more industry. Because yeah, it, it, it's evident. Yeah. Yeah, because of like it's you know next to the sea and stuff. I think. This is probably nearest the bottom floor section, which is like all the docks and stuff and where all the shipping comes in. Maybe the old Fisher uh, Ranch is the word, maybe? Fisher I don't Ranch? Really... Fisher Ranch? What would you call that? Fisher? I don't... I that. A fishery. Uh, there you go. Uh, a fishery. <laughs> a fishery. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I, uh, you, you threw me off so badly yeah. with Fish Ranch that I wasn't quite sure what you were trying to to fish say. Ranch. You know, we've got to like um, crawl all of those fish yeah. and ride them. <laughs> um, you know what? I, there's something I don't like about this. I think it's his eye. I'm looking at the uh, inked version at the moment. His eye really scares me. But it, it which has to which, be like that which one? His like damaged one? Yeah, his da damaged one. Yes, yeah. 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 Well, I don't know. You just said his eye. He's got to. <laughs> it's just a funny way of putting it. Damaged. Also, I don't know if you noticed. Have you seen on his thumb? He's got part of his tattoo there. Yeah, that's so cool. Yeah. I literally just noticed that. For um, anyone that doesn't know, it's uh, a special tattoo which allows him to like uh, do that sort of OK symbol with it. And you can like look through it and then use your other hand to like make it magnify. And you can zoom in on things in the distance. It's really fun. Yeah. It's really cool. Um, it's one of those. You're so you're. I was going to say you're one of my favorite players. That's not quite the oh way to put it. But I really like uh, DMing for you because you've always got really interesting. Like you're trying to mechanically engineer your way through a puzzle, right? So um, <laughs> when when you say, "Hey, I want to, <laughs> I want magic zoom in powers," <laughs> <laughs> magic you know? zoom in powers. Yeah, um, I think I've always seen magic as more to do with science because you, mm -hmm. you can't... I'm not very good with words, so you might have to bear with me, but I, I, I've, I've thought about magic this whole time as, as science-based and it's researchable, and I've always thought that you can't know how to work magic if you can't understand it. Whenever people talk about magic, it's always sort of like suspension of disbelief like you've, you've just got to believe in it right. um whereas i've thought like maybe they should implement maths into it maybe they should implement shapes and and light and you know working with these things and yeah i've always thought of it as yeah science, we've kind yeah. of um so dungeons and dragons has the different types of magic right so you have um arcane and then like the natural magics that like druids and rangers mm. um can uh espouse and then you have um like holy magic the kind of thing that clerics and paladins wield mm. um your sort of um understanding of magic has really kind of shaped the way that arcane magic works in arcadon um oh. it's much more of like a programming language isn't it than it is like yes uh, like painting for example yeah like 
you know, a, a paladin could paint with his words, right? That's his conviction. But like mm. for you and for other wizards, it's the study. It's and the study, yeah. It's almost like you're building the magic yourself. Right, you're having to pull on the, the... Yeah, actually that's something to go by, is that it's described in the actual Dungeons and Dragons manual that uh, magic is this sort of like interconnected web that's like invisible to the human eye, but wizards can pull upon this web and pull things into shapes and do things with it. Um, and I thought a really interesting way to merge science and magic together was to through computer language, and I thought that was really interesting, so... Um, yeah. <laughs> I don't really know where that was going, but I... <laughs> well, it's, it's an interesting discussion about um, about magic, about something that Rick both uh, is inherently like infused with, because obviously he's a wizard, but also he's very passionate about it. It's interesting to me that we would sort of describe... Uh, we, we describe magic as uh, arcane magic as like scientific and like almost like kind of clinically right like it's a programming mm. language it's maths um, yeah. uh, but you know Matt's wearing like a, not Matt your Matt <laughs> Rook's wearing like a, a patched poncho and <laughs> yeah yeah there's like a degree of informality about it <laughs> yeah yeah I, it should be fun I mean it's like any uh, programmer that's like in the loft space you know, they're probably there for days working out that crap. Um, oh, I just had a thought. Um, it's gone. <laughs> so what you're saying is that Rook is like consistently, he's like, he's like the 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 games designer in at crunch time in the studio. He's like consistently two days before his deadline <laughs> with the crap ton of bugs to work out of the system. That's exactly. why. <laughs> Yeah, that he is, is him. the way he is all yeah. the time. That's why he can't talk. <laughs> There's too many things going on. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's something I wanted to mention was um, this background. So I recently a game has come out. It's called Townscaper, and in this game you can build little uh, cities in this uh, really bleak <laughs> puddle of water uh, or ocean. <laughs> And um, yeah, you can add like tiers to your buildings and uh, add platforms and all sorts of things. And that really helped in the production of the background for this. Uh, I think it's a really good tool. I just wanted to put it out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, we've been thinking about uh, once now we're working on chapter three, mm. um, using it a little more to sort of, because perspective is a bitch, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> So much so that now when I'm drawing maps and stuff for for buildings and uh, like I'm coming up with stuff, I'm like, oh, don't draw any round buildings. <laughs> oh, no more round walls because it's been such an issue. <laughs> yeah, it's such a shame because like, yeah, it came out just after, well, towards the end of the production of number two. Oh, it would have been it, it just um, so handy, so, so handy, especially for not whole. Um, with all of its tiers and it's got a lot of iron work as well in the uh, small buildings and stuff whenever you have like buildings on struts they'll have like massive iron girders really pretty game i suggest if you're into drawing backgrounds and landscapes go check it out it's really cool um i think it was produced by bad north game i might be getting that wrong but you can find the guy that helped produce it it's called oskSTA on twitter it's on That's Steam as well, right? So it's, yeah, it's yeah. easy to download. Yeah. Um, so Knoll is kind of like, for, well, for me, I think we sort of have this working understanding between us that Knoll and as like a, an island and uh, a Meriloth, uh, we're drawing quite heavily on uh, Dishonored, like yes. Dishonored's world, right? As influence um, hmm. in terms of aesthetic and sort of the industrialization, yeah. Yeah, and I think that's its whole thing. Not whole is the industrialization of magic and yeah, yeah the various areas it encompasses. Would it also be fair to say that Rick is a little bit of um, Corvo Tano? Oh yeah, yeah, the, yeah, definitely. When I started playing, when I started making. Rook, I definitely had this idea of like a a tussle haired brunette. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely. Um, yeah, I don't know where the inspiration for the scar in his eye came from. 
actually. I can't remember. But it yeah. fit in with his law. I, I feel well. like he had that before we, he had a backstory, right? He did, yeah. Yeah. So I think we should probably talk a little bit about um, Gwing. <laughs> 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 and, now, and Rick's relationship <laughs> with Gwing. <laughs> now, I, I know you were going to ask me this. <laughs> <laughs> um, what can I say? He's lovely. <laughs> <laughs> and and I don't know if this is something Beth said, but like I can't differentiate between Gwing nor Beth. Like they, they, they are the same person. <laughs> yeah, we did. T- we um we did uh, sort of record these a little bit out of order. Um. Uh, I did talk to Beth, and she said she will say in the episode when of Wings when that comes out that um, you know these are your first characters. They're very <laughs> much like you as people. Um, and man, do you ever do you ever just like stop and think about how Rick and Gwing are like original party members? Like it's really weird, yeah. Like, how I'm how surprised. long <laughs> you've lasted? How far you've come? I remember uh, on like the second or third session walking home back to your place with you, I remember saying, I hope Rook gets really old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's this kind of this long running joke that uh, Rook can't, he can't die in battle because he has to turn to Gandalf. <laughs> he does. <laughs> and if he dies before then, I will cry. <laughs> That's okay. We cry a lot with D&D. <laughs> Not afraid to deny that. Um, can I ask where uh, is the rook? Where's a poncho? Because you you yourself love a poncho, right? Oh, absolutely. They're very comfy. I d- recommend them. I got one at a wood fair in Surrey somewhere. It was really nice. Really, really good. Recommend it. <laughs> it's the best poncho. <laughs> um, in general, you're a person who I I think you're a person who like wears a lot of fabric like uh you, lo- you love a good harem pant for example <laughs> oh yes absolutely if it wasn't so bloody hot right now i would be under like three ten layers that was a big margin wasn't it i don't know why i did that <laughs> yeah, that's quite a big step up yeah yeah it was <laughs> <laughs> rook's outfit has is similar though like he does go from like oh here's my shirt here's my trousers to Oh, I've got ten layers on over the top of this, uh, and <laughs> some of it's like mischievi- mischievously like hiding, like pockets and books and stuff. Yeah, he he has a book strapped to his chest. That's where he keeps his spell book. Yeah, I think you did that. I think you strapped your book to your chest because you were afraid that I was going to take it away from you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know what you were expecting. But yes, yes, I was. <laughs> That happened. That happened after something, though, right? Like something like that happened, and you were like, it did. "No, it's not happening to me. <laughs> I refuse." I don't, I don't know what caused that to happen, but, I, but something I, I, triggered it for sure. It moved from your bag to your chest. Yeah, yeah. I I also remember discovering why strapping it to my chest was a bad idea because I fed in water. Oh yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And you were like, "Your book is wet," <laughs> and I was like, ah, "No, <laughs> she got me." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll always get you. There's always gonna be a way. <laughs> always, always. That's what's so stressful about D and D is is the not knowing. Like you can prepare in so so many ways, but you're gonna get us. <laughs> and isn't that the true joy of it? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Thanks for watching this, everybody. Uh, I hope you uh, enjoyed this little chat. Um, thanks for joining me, Matthew. No, you're very welcome. Thank you for for letting me ramble and um, okay. hopefully you can understand my words. Uh, you'll find <laughs> that as we go on, uh, these are all going to be pretty different. Um, you know, me and Matt spent a long time here talking about uh, the shape of magic, but, uh, you know, they're not all going to be the same. So if you're looking for a little bit of behind the scenes on everybody's characters and the players' thoughts on them, then make sure to come back for all of them. We um, hope you enjoyed this one. Hope you're looking forward to the next ones. If you like this video, then please like it. Please subscribe to our channel. We make pretty... Uh, well, I, you know, I'm a little biased, but I think we make pretty good stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's good. <laughs> Leave a comment. Leave a comment as well. Uh, let us know if you really hate it. <laughs> let us know if you like it. Thanks for watching. 
and we'll see you in the next one. See you around. Bye. Bye.